I'm Stephen Wallace. Um, I'm a previous MasterChef winner, 2007. Um, some years ago now, but um, I've been in the food industry ever since. Um, I currently work as a consultant chef, flavorist, and recipe innovator. So I work with um, food brands and drinks brands and help them develop new ideas for new products, new flavors, new recipes, um, and also marketing those products. So yeah, really exciting uh, career that's stemmed from winning the show. So in terms of how MasterChef really changed things for me, um, I think it, I think the biggest thing, it gives you credibility because so many people know the show. It's, you know, you've got this incredible fame. I mean, I still get stopped on the street, like people that love the show, they recognize me, they know my name, my full name, which is sometimes creepy, but they love the show so much. And I think having that platform People also respect that it's a very tough um, thing to achieve. So I think what that's done is it's helped me really access some really exciting jobs and projects because people trust my instincts, they trust my ability, they, they trust my culinary talent. And because I've been through, I've cooked for Michelin style restaurants and chefs and I've been under all that pressure, I know myself, I still look back and think, how did I do that? Um, but it's exciting to know that, well, and also grateful to know that people still value that credibility of the show and therefore my, my abilities I'm inspired and my to do some lovely risotto. Um, we've got some beautiful arborio rice here. We've got these beautiful courgettes. So some of it is going to go into the risotto itself. And then the others I'm going to do some nice curls. So you've kind of got a combination of cooked courgette and raw and then we've got some lovely herbs to finish it off lovely courgette which will get sweated down so that's that i'm going to use half of this huge big onion yeah the yellow courgette i'm going to use in lovely peelings at the end to dress the dish with. Kind of add a sort of raw, fresh note. So the onion is going to be in the base. So I'm going to use some onion and some fresh garlic. And some my pan. I find this one of the easiest ways of just peeling cloves is snip that little end off, flat of the knife, and there you have it. So today for Beautiful Planet, I decided to cook sort of vegetable based. I mean, there's lots of beautiful vegetables um, around at the moment and it being sort of early, well, midsummer, I really kind of zoomed in on these yellow and green courgettes and it's, I decided to do a risotto. So really fragrant, lots of herbs, lots of alliums, garlic. What I love doing with, when I cook vegetables is I love that combination of, you know, I'll cook something within the base of the dish, but then what I like to do is then add raw vegetables. So very finely shaved or peelings of vegetables to give crunch, to give a lightness, to give a freshness and lots of herbs. And what you can also do is get some salt crystals, add this and then grind it down even further if you want to make a garlic paste. Base, this beauty. Veg peelings that you have that aren't um, in contact with the, you know, aren't too muddy, nice and clean. So bits of carrot or bits of stray onion, you can pop in there as well. I'm just gonna let the stock warm up a bit, which is gonna, I'm gonna keep adding to the risotto. Um, got a bit of white wine as well. And then I'm gonna start adding in the vegetables, the courgettes, uh, once this cooks. I've also got for some cheesiness, some engavita. Um, which will add a lovely cheesy, so these lovely flakes. So I'm going to add that at the um, 
whilst it's cooking to sort of get some creaminess as well. So what we're going to do is we're just going to cook these onions until they become translucent. You can also do is add salt to the onions and it helps draw the moisture out. So if you want them to, um, to cook, now I'm going to add in my finely chopped courgette. So onions are naturally sweet, so they're going to have lots of lovely flavour. I'm going to add in my beautiful garlic. which is going to add even more fragrance. I think one of the things I love, and this comes from being multi-ethnic, so I've got an um, English mum and a Pakistani father, I love local um, ethnic supermarkets where you can get really great produce, really great herbs, far better than supermarkets. Good things like spinach. So what you're really doing here is layering lots of flavours. So you've got the onions, you've got the courgette, you've got the garlic. Um, I'm sort of creating base flavour. I'm going to add a bit of the wine. Cheers everybody. It's the decay. So now I'm going to put in the wine. And what I'm going to do is just make sure all the grains of rice are well coated, well slicked with this courgette. So here it's really key to keep stirring. I know there's lots of these risotto, you can do risottos where you don't stir them. But I, I kind of like it because you end up getting the, the starches out of the rice, which makes it creamier. The rice grains are getting fatter, swelling up. So they're taking on the stock. Mm. So even if there's a little bit of bite, the residual heat is still going to continue to cook. Cook the rice. So this hasn't really been seasoned very well. I'm going to add some of this um, brewer's yeast to add a sort of cheesiness and then I'm going to keep checking the seasoning to layer it up. <clears throat> so I didn't put salt in at the beginning because we had stock. It is easy for anyone to criticise and you often the people that are criticising are on their asses on, the, on, the, on a sofa in front of a television you know, I'm not cooking themselves. So I would say ignore what other people are saying or what other people think. Enjoy it, experiment, see it as time out, see it as meditation, see it as something to enjoy and actually be curious, be curious about the ingredients. And you know what, all chefs, you know, have bad days. We all make mistakes, but this is all part of learning how to combine ingredients, how to get the perfect timings when you're cooking something. Sometimes you can overcook something or you don't add enough seasoning or too much seasoning or not enough something or another. And that's okay, you know, it, it's so long as it's edible. Don't give a monkeys about the critics, just enjoy yourself. Put your heart and soul into your food. And I think that will really come across in what you do. And as you build confidence, you'll get better and better. Run some fresh herbs right at the end. So in goes your, your fresh parsley. Lemon zest here would be wonderful as well. This would really lift the flavors. So you can see how this is thickened up quite considerably, but it's still nice and creamy. And again, test the seasoning. So at this point, always test to make sure the seasoning's perfect. Take this courgette and I'm just going to do some peelings. 
a fresh courgette. A little bit of rapeseed oil. A fine In terms of the funniest situation in the kitchen for me, I was in Paris working, I was doing an estage with Pierre Gagnier. So all these butch, you know, macho French chefs who were just cooking 12, 14 hours a day. I mean, you know, it's a two mission star restaurant. The standards were so high and it's Paris. So it's so super elevated. And I went in as stagiaire, and so stagiaire, you're literally picking herbs, you're scraping mushrooms, you're doing the shittiest jobs. And I had, from the day before, or two days before, I'd got some gunk stuck. I was scraping girolles, uh, boxes and boxes of the bastards. And I had got some, a little slight infection under my nail. So that day I actually got, um, I had to deal with some crayfish and one of the spikes from the crayfish went up this nail that was infected. And I let out the biggest, girliest scream. And it literally, they all just, because all these macho chefs just turned around and started laughing at me. So I was like, complete humiliation. Because it was like, I yelped like a girl. No offense to girls, you know, love you all. But, um, you know, my masculinity was severely challenged that day. <laughs> Delicious. Thank you. Absolutely delicious. Yeah. Mm. Tastes like summer. I, I think the, I think one of the things I really love about the food industry, which I don't think is as apparent, there are so many different places you can take it. So, you know, you can aspire to these incredible fine dining, three Michelin star, the glamour, the glamorous restaurants like Noma, um, but that's, that, that takes such a level of dedication and you've got to be prepared for that. And if you want that, fantastic. But you can also go into, you know, street food. You can also go and work and just be making pancakes, but the very best pancakes or bread, or you can be consulting or you can be working in a food factory doing, developing food brands. You know, so there, there are many, or you can be working in a hotel as a chef or traveling around the world or even a private chef and being flown around the world on a private jet. So, you know, it's really about what you put into it that really matters and how you interpret. You know, there are lots of rules, culinary rules, ways of cooking. Once you've got that foundation, you then apply you to that. And that's when it becomes really, really exciting.